has been today what you added. Uh, if you build the whole thing from scratch, that's awesome. Uh, also, if you uh, if you think you're particularly relevant for one category or another, I've, I've put those up there. But uh, you know, if it turned out that you use something else that you'd like to be judged for, uh, then, uh, then that's cool. So basically, we're going to go through this as quick as we can. Two minutes each, maybe a minute or so for questions from the judges. Uh, three judges, one's me, and can the other two judges introduce yourself? Well, four judges. Cool. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Katie Ray. I'm the managing director of TechStars in Boston. Very cool. I am Dan uh, Ogonovich. I'm an engineer at Juniper Networks. Very cool. So, hey, I'm Keith Beerus. I'm uh, Phil and Android products at Facebook. Cool. Well, maybe I don't need to judge that. You guys can do it. Alright, well, uh, maybe I'll just yeah, that. So, just to remind you, there are three categories. Best app, best game, best use of social graph, oh, sorry, open graph, and then we'll have best overall. Maybe I'll decide the best overall. Um, okay, so if you could just make sure if you're next on the list, just make sure you're ready to come up um, and uh, do your thing. And, you ready, guys? I think we are, so... Uh, Take it away. Two minutes, okay, so we started frankly yesterday afternoon with concept idea and did a little bit of graphics we'll show you and the whole coding was done today. And we tried to kind of like incorporate everything, a little bit of core open graphs, there's some achievements, and some stuff. So this is a very a very simple uh, mobile game, HTML5 mobile, or uh, mobile web only. It's kind of a location-based zombie game. So we're tying into Facebook places. You basically look who your friends are, uh, where they checked in, and you have to save them from zombies. So first we can show how it plays on the on the phone. We'll see over there. Yeah, so this is a list of your friends, how they, who they checked in. Uh, let me check out the microphone. Oh, yeah, sorry. Sorry about that. So this is a list of your friends, uh, their check ins in the most recent. Uh, every check in is uh, considered a plea for help. It's saying, I'm being attacked by zombies, please come help me. So we're going to help our friend Michelle here at the top. We're going to click on it. It's going to say, What's your device? You're going to see your friend in the middle of the cage, whoops, my apologies, being attacked by zombies in the area. Uh, saying, help me, help me. Oh, we won. Not bad. We saved Michelle Bruno. So now we send an app request dialogue that says, uh, you know, I saved you, please pay it forward, which uh, I'm going to cancel. And then we come back. So the whole idea is uh, a check-in to plea for help. Uh, again. See other friends up here. Now, a couple things just to point out real quick. Uh, like I said, uh, oh, let's not do that. One. That's less exciting. Uh, so why are you doing that? So we actually also tie into Street View, which you probably saw. Like we take the check-in place from Facebook, get the longitude and latitude, go to uh, Google, um, and, and fetch a, a, a Street View and post that in nice so it kind of makes it a little more fun. And uh, fetching those places done with FQL, so we query the tables and get the last 10 check-ins from all your friends, uh, uh, sorted by most recent first. Um, pretty, pretty real time, so. Very cool. So there we have another location. Yeah. It's your profile. It's your friend's profile. It's kind of hard to see. Watch over this again, I'll just show you the achievements. Sure, you can switch to that. Yeah, exactly. So you see over here what we've done here on the side, it's like we registered some achievements, and then now we, we never got to the 10 to, to all the achievements here from for, that, that Kitty was playing. But basically, like, we use that, and we also use, if you look at, uh, I was playing beforehand on my profile here, we use the open graph. You know, I saved the person with friends, uh, friends with zombies. So we try to leverage all the APIs as much as we done in, in six straight hours. That's amazing. That's it. Oh. Thanks, man. Do you have any questions from the judges? Yeah, I have one. What happens if you don't save your friends? Actually, so there's two outcomes. So if you don't save your friends, then you basically get this, like, uh, I failed. So instead of the achievement is to save your friend, it's, you fail, so you feel a little bit bad on your timeline. But you also get a chance to actually have a second chance. You send a, friend, a request to that request to that friend and say, oh, I failed, you could please check in again, and I will try to do better next time. Can you dress up your own zombie? Can you dress your own zombie? Not yet, but uh, if I have more 24 hours, we'll do some more of that. <laughs> so after you save your friend, 
they have the same view, right? Yes, exactly. So is it the exact same game, or does it will it eventually progress up? So as you saw, we saw we have little scores. So actually, as, as you kill the zombies, you get a score. And then the idea is like the more sc the higher score you have, more complicated the game gets. So there'll be more zombies coming in. So eventually, it's going to be impossible <coughs> to save your friends in the ten seconds you have. <laughs> Very good. Thanks. Great job again, guys. I'm uh, Brent Grinna, CEO of Evertrue. I'm PJ Greg, uh, lead iOS developer for Evertrue. Evertrue helps colleges and other nonprofits like Brown University better track and engage their donors over time by connecting the traditional donor databases that store hundreds of thousands of records of graduates with the social graph. And up until tonight, we'd only worked with LinkedIn's API, so it was really a catalyst for us to dive into Facebook. So what we've done here is um, this, we, we have these uh, apps that are, this one's for uh, one of our clients, Middlesex School, and um, I'll show you a little bit about that uh, later, but what we built today was a sort of welcome screen to help engage uh, people as they come into our app. Um, so to increase the vir the viral nature of the app, to try and spread the app around to other alumni, um, we want to use Facebook here. So um, I did a quick like one of three type of thing, but we'd really like it to be like a thermometer graphically, that sort of thing. But so if you do log in with Facebook, we did like we saw earlier the um, OAuth, and so I do OK, comes back. And um, then it comes to the next screen saying, why don't you let your other uh, alumni know? And so the key here is that what we want to do is compare the friends of the person that OAuth to the alumni that we have in our alumni database and mash up that data to only get the alumni and then have that those be the ones that show up here when I click here to share the app um, through an app request dialog. Right now, the person I'm using only has one friend, me, but you can, um, you can say that one, once we do the mashup of that data, it would be alumni there that would then be shared, not all of your friends. So in this case, I, I choose the person that I want to share it with, one of the other alumni, uh, and I do the app request to them, and then it, goes off and does that, and if you see here, on my phone I did get the, oh, here we go. So we get the app request here, and if I go into the app, and I don't know why it wasn't automatically going, but I found that I had to actually do the jewels here. So now if I do, and then I do that guy, and then we come back here, and you can see that on the App Store, it will go right to Middlesex Alumni Mobile, just like uh, we saw earlier. And then once we're in the app here, we click Go to actually get into the app. This is our regular app that we had built previously. Everything earlier we had already seen. So we have things like, you know, we have a um, local view that shows everyone uh, in the area here. But what I wanted to show you was the other part of Facebook stuff that we did was that if I search for someone, you can see um, one of our views here. This is the profile view for someone. Um, and this now shows, because I'm OAuth, and this person has OAuth, I now see both Facebook data along next to the LinkedIn data. And the reason this is important for schools is a typical nonprofit has inaccurate work information for about 80% of their records. So it makes it tremendously difficult to try to figure out who they should be targeting, what kind of gift amounts they should be asking for, 
And so by marrying that data uh, with the social graph, we can help them be much more intelligent about collecting this data automatically as opposed to you having to like call your school or log into their online portal and manually update your information. So uh, really excited about pushing in this direction. Cool. Thank you very much, guys. Okay, so just a question about the open graph part at the start. Um, when I want to send this app to other alumni, can you automatically tell whether these people are alumni from a specific school, or do I need to make that selection as a user? Well, we have an alumni database. That's the core of our application, okay. is that we get, like, the person goes in and they, we have an alumni database. So the whole point of that and what I meant by matching up the data is that we go off and grab the OAuth person's friends and then compare that to names that we have in the database. Is this person in the database? Yes, okay, they're an alumni. So show them on the app request screen. And we do that for all of them and then we have a list, not of all your friends, but of all your friends that are alumni. Yeah, interesting. All right, thank you very much. So I'm not sure if Infinite Num Numpkins is the company or the app, but... Uh... It was just a group of us that were hacking something together. Uh, and sadly, we started from scratch and we don't have anything to demonstrate oh, right now. Can you even tell us what you were trying to do? Uh, we were building uh, social rock, paper, scissors. That's right. Um, I thought that was a great idea. Uh, one of society's greatest battles. Rock versus paper versus scissors. Um, but it didn't come to pass. Against us. It didn't come to pass. Yeah. I'm very sorry to hear that. Uh, in which case, let's move on <laughs> to Zom Zomita. Well, we should, we should get the <laughs> uh, for having a good idea. Right. Okay, Zomita. <laughs> Do we have another zombie app in the house? No? Matt, any zombies in the other room? Zombies! <laughs> Actually, I think they might be in there. There's boys on the team in that bag. He's the other zombie team. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they've resigned. That's a shame. Social hackers, come on up. Our developer team here, and we had some grand plans. Grand plans, and having worked in product development for over 15 years, I knew how to scale it down, and we can have it. We can have something to show in the three hours of demo. So uh, the vision is this: we have GitHub, but we don't have a social platform for hackers to share their accomplishments with the with their friends in the network and also capture their accomplishments over a period of time in timeline mode. So what we did is using the theme that we have here, uh, have this create a couple of new verbs or actions for open graph and objects which happens to be projects and properties which happens to be programming languages. And those are what the hackers would post on their timelines. And over a period of time, you have aggregation in terms of the programming language that you have done, the number of projects you have done within a certain period of time, and, and there are verbs which are hacking, testing, published. And there are more that we could have done to capture intermediate states for the project. But again, limiting the scope so that we can finish something and show you guys. 
And I, just to throw in there, this is our, I think this is the first time all of any of us have done any Facebook hacking. Um, so this is very rudimentary. We have grand plans for this. Are you so, looking for sympathy? <laughs> no, I'm just looking to explain. No, I'm just looking to explain. We, uh, we wrote uh, the app using the JavaScript API as well as uh, some PHP mm -hmm. for the backend. And also, uh, uh, the interface is put together using jQuery Mobile. Um, so if you're not logged in already, you have this. using language, PHP. That's it. Publish. JavaScript alert. And now he'll demo how it looks on this Facebook page. Yeah, so the, the idea was really so you can keep track of what you're doing and you could look at what your friends are doing and then if you were to visit our actual uh, our application website, our website could then query what your friends are doing, sort of look at what the aggregate, what your aggregate social network is working on. And then you could say, oh look, you know, I have this friend, he's doing a lot of PHP work, I don't know PHP, I should connect with him to get some help. Um, so if we come over to my activity log here, we can see that, you know, I've done a lot of social hacking in the last, you know, few hours, thanks to this, uh, this event. And uh, so here's all the events, and I can scroll down, can't really see what I'm doing here. But uh, the idea would be it would group your projects based upon what project you hacked on, based upon what state the project's in, either hacking, uh, testing, debugging, or uh, shipping and publishing. And it would group projects based upon what project you're working on, and it would group uh, projects based upon which uh, languages you were programming in. And we feel like this would provide a great way for developers within your greater social network to connect, to interact, and sort of to facilitate the, the work that they're, that they're doing. You know, there's a lot of tools, like you said, like GitHub to share code and to share resources, but there's not a lot of tools out there we feel to actually connect developers in a way that they can facilitate each other in accomplishing their projects. So here we've got favorite projects I've been hacking on. I've got you know, the Linux kernel. I've got by winning with the uh, you know the phone gap people. I've got my Android apps. I've got uh, you know my social hacker. You can come down and see what uh, uh, the recent hacks and my favorite languages. You know I, I like Java. PHP is pretty great. C you know C is fun and then Objective C. So uh, all right, cool. cool. No. <laughs> <laughs> I have a quick question, which is, uh, is could you actually hook it up to GitHub so you could yes. actually see what the people are doing on the side of the thing or preempt it? Uh, you know, ideally, yes. Uh, I mean, again, like, this is our first time out right. doing this. And but that was just based on the manual. Yeah. 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 This is pretty much all done by that guy back there. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
Jeff from Crave Labs. Uh, so the app I built today is entirely from scratch this afternoon. Um, full architecture up. Um, started with a blank AWS box around noon today. All new code. Um, and didn't really decide what I was building until about 7 o'clock when I realized I haven't called my wife yet today. And it's a constant problem for me. I never remember to actually yeah, I'm in Cambridge all day working on my startup and realized, you know what, there could be an easier way. I'm on a mobile phone. What, could, what better mobile app to build than just a reminder system and a request system to put that nudge in and say, hey, call me when, when you've got a free moment. So what I built was a jQuery mobile front end HTML5 app that uses the open graph to grab my friends list. And it just says, very simply, you know, let's see if we can find Ryan down here. Pull up Ryan and say, hey Ryan, when you're ready, can you give me a buzz? No. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, we use the re request 208 API with new mobile dialogue, which is a nice new addition. And uh, I can get Team to give me a buzz. <laughs> and this will pop up both in his Facebook app, as a notification, pop up on his mobile. And the idea would be, you know, we'd start adding in tracking all right, you can see the history of calls back and forth. You can start pulling in other open graph data, such as birthdays and reminders, uh, and build this out completely to have a, a really useful application that is, uh, adds some seamless features to the, the new Facebook apps that don't really incorporate voice calling at all today. Thank you. Thank you very much. She won't call me because she knows I'm in meetings all day long. She never wants to actually pick up the phone and, and like ring me in the middle of a meeting. So, oh, uh, no, the camera's off. <laughs> uh, so, question: You yeah. said that a notification would buzz on, on the other person's side, right? Does that mean it would show up on their timeline that they're supposed to call you? So we we could actually put in uh, the the option to say, hey, yeah, do you want to do you want to uh, post an action with this as well. Right now it's just a request. Um, so, do requests show up in the ticker? I don't even know. This is the first time today I've played the request. Yeah, I got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> I have another really stupid question. What if you don't have your friend's phone number? Uh, in a lot of cases, it's already in the uh, in Facebook. Um, people will post their number, oh, okay. so we can pull that. It's Maybe. I don't know my friends post their phone numbers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but in addition, 